Photography reveals our mortality like no other medium or art form ever has, certainly not visual medium. The two critical factors in photography without which it cannot exist are light and time. A camera is a time machine able to transport us back in an instant to any point since its invention, or conversely, bring a moment in the distant past into the here and now with vivid power. It can also bring forth highly nuanced and not always coherent emotions. I look at this photograph from the early 1960s. I see myself gazing intently into my mother's eyes. She must have been in her early 30s then. Now she is 88, very frail, and she's in and out of hospital more or less constantly. I am nearly a quarter of a century older than my father is in this photograph. He died 10 years ago. My sister is approaching retirement age. How can one look at a family photograph such as this without a keen sense of the passage of time, of one's frailty, mortality, and a sense of the smallness of our existence in the context of the inexorable flow of time. Of course, I have no memory of this scene whatsoever, but photographs often replace memory and is even capable of providing us with false memories or misremembrances, if you like. I can look at this image and huge passages of my youth, of infancy, earliest memories of holidays, family events, school days, summer holidays lasting an eternity, and Christmases full of snow and candles and toys are compressed and funneled into this one image. It seems to me there is little material difference between memory and imagination. Both reside in billions of electrical synapses in our mind. A photograph can present us with a slice of reality that we can easily project ourselves into, with a substantiality that can almost be mistaken for memory. Alexander Gardner's photographs of the immediate aftermath of the Battle of Antietam during the American Civil War remain amongst the most shocking and stark of war photography. Even today, where we are jaded by so much news media and images of war, these grainy black and white pictures take us aback by the casual banality of death. One might think of the images of Goya, one of the greatest artists ever to pick up a brush. His Disasters of War series are perhaps the most horrific representations in all art. Yet, even as we gasp at the horror of these atrocities, we also gasp at Goya's genius in representing them, the utter brilliance of form and line, the handling of chiaroscuro and composition. Whatever else these prints and drawings are, they are supreme works of art. The horror of the subject is at least, in part, mitigated by the beauty and brilliance of its representation. We may also think of the drawings of Otto Dix, who was a German machine gunner in the First World War, and gives us some of his experiences with unmatched force. Nevertheless, the reality is again transmogrified into art. We see his experiences second-hand, mediated by the skill and aesthetic intent of the artist. Picasso's Guernica is rightly considered to be one of the greatest anti-war paintings ever done, a savage, visceral howl of anger against the anonymous, automated slaughter of warfare. But Picasso was, like Goya, an incontestable genius, and Guernica, for all its depicted horrors, is honoured by the finest art museums across the world, one of the most revered iconic works of art in history, a monument to our civilization, whilst at the same time being an indictment of it. 
There is no such sublime musings with Gardner's photographs. These tangled, bloated corpses strike us with total unambiguity. No aesthetic considerations can blind us to the reality of war here. Like Goya's prints, these may also be second-hand impressions, they're photographs after all, but we can easily project ourselves into the photographs. We are standing shoulder to shoulder with Gardner with our muddy boots on. We recognise the twisted bodies are some mother's son, a brother, someone's father. A photograph can bring us to the stark realisation of our mortality in a way that not even the old masters can quite match. Rembrandt's self-portraits are often put forward as the supreme example of a great artist's ability to confront one's own mortality and decay, uh, documenting the ravages of time on one's physiognomy. But let me put forward these images too. Even before we know who they are, what we're looking at, there is a sense that there is something awful going on here. These faces are full of helplessness and dread. Remarkable portraits indeed, yet the photographer is unknown. He is a faceless apparatchik of Stalin's secret police in the 1930s, the NKVD, which was the forerunner of the KGB. These people, and hundreds of thousands, perhaps millions more like them, were rounded up and arrested on completely false trumped-up charges, uh, declared enemies of the people, and executed. And they were executed sometimes within a few hours of these mugshots being taken. The fear and bewilderment in their eyes is very real. They are looking death squarely in the face, and they know it. We admire the portraits of Diane Arbus or Richard Avedon, but I find these, I hesitate to use the artistic term portraits, these masks of stricken humanity, more poignant, more touching. And how can they not be? There is absolutely no regard for composition or art or mood or style or anything like that. Just human beings on the precipice of extinction. One person's death inevitably implies our own. These are just a few of the victims of one of the most murderous dictatorships in history. We are regarding the raw, unadorned face of that history, a purely bureaucratic record of the process of extermination. We see these faces knowing their fate. They're all going to die. But actually, isn't that true of all portraits? In fact, isn't it true of anyone who has ever appeared in a photograph? You, me, the newborn baby, we're all going to die. It's only a question of time. And time is a speciality of the photographic image. As Susan Sontag wrote, portraits in life are also portraits in death. So perhaps we should bear that in mind. The next time you post a selfie on Instagram, take care. That image might be the one that future generations will see on your headstone.